Hello everyone, this is Lindy from Love, Create, Celebrate. Welcome back to our channel. Today I'm doing some more modern DIY artwork. If you've seen any of our home tours, you know that we don't have a ton of large scale art pieces and large scale art pieces can get very expensive. So I decided to DIY a few. And since I love texture, I decided to do three 3D pieces. I really, really love how these turned out. Hopefully you guys like them. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. So the first project I'm doing today just involved a sheet of half inch MDF and some leftover paint. So it's really affordable and I'm starting by cutting two equal sized squares, which I decided to do at 24 inches. I used a track and a circular saw to cut the length of the board, and then I used a table saw to cut the width. So I drew some designs on to the MDF. I kind of mimicked um, a design I saw on Pinterest that I really liked. So I'm gonna try and recreate that. And what I'm doing is cutting a second piece of MDF out of this scrap over there. And I'm going to laminate that on top and then paint everything the same color. So it's gonna have kind of, um, the texture is really gonna come from like the 3D effect of it. That's the plan right now. Um, yeah, let's cut some MDF. After I had the designs drawn onto the MDF, I took measurements of the approximate shape sizes and then started to cut all of those out on the table saw. For the rounded shapes, I either just traced something circular I could find or I used this string and pencil technique. I was playing with circle shapes here and I put a mark here because that's actually where I want the center, um, where I want the radius to be at, so that the edges go inward on both sides. So I've just been playing with different lengths to see which one I like the best. I think that works. And then once I had all those shapes drawn, I used the jigsaw to cut all those rounded edges. And then because I'm not all that accurate with the jigsaw, I sanded down all of those edges so that they were nice and smooth and round. Then I attached the MDF shapes on top of the MDF backing using wood glue. I used a little silicone spreader that we have. I'll link it below because it's actually really great for wood glue and spread glue around the backs and then nailed them in place just to hold them in place while the glue set.
Next, I puttied all of the edges between the layers of MDF. This is just a really great way to make it look like there aren't any seams and it's just one of those small details that makes the finish look more professional. After that was done, I primed everything and then Russell gave it a coat of paint for me. And here's what this artwork looked like when I was done. I'm so happy with the final pieces. I think you could do this with different colors of paint and different shapes to match your own home, different sizes, but I'm really happy. We hung it up in our reading nook and I just think it looks amazing and really adds something to that space. So we have this Ikea frame that we've had in the house for a while. I still haven't put any art pieces or photos in it. So I thought maybe I would use this to try and make some new textured art for the house. So I'm gonna try a material I haven't used before and see if I can do something interesting with the texture. I'm gonna try and use this plaster of Paris that we have. I've never used it before, but it says two parts of this to one part cold water. Let's try. Right now it's got this kind of like goopy texture. I think I want it smoother. Okay, this is much better. Once I was happy with the consistency, I used a small notched trowel to spread some of the plaster of Paris across the entire backer board. So there's a fairly even surface of plaster. What I'm gonna do now is take the square part of my trowel and draw some lines. These lines are what are creating the texture of this piece. I did do them somewhat straight, but I wasn't overly concerned about getting the lines straight or perfect because it is an organic piece and an organic material. So I knew it would be fine, whatever I did. And also if you do mess up, like here there was a big gap that I didn't get any plaster in, it's okay to just smooth all of that out and do it again, but you do have to work quickly because the plaster dries out quickly. I went around the edges of the piece when it was wet with my finger and with sandpaper when it was dry just to make sure it would be able to sit in the Ikea frame nicely. And once everything was dry, I gave it its first coat of paint, which looks glossy here, but dries matte. After the first coat of paint had dried, I did have to come back a couple times with a paintbrush and just look at the piece from different angles and fill in all the textured pieces because it really shows up in a black piece if you missed a little spot of paint. And here's how it looked on the wall in the Ikea frame when it was done. 
I really like this piece. I think it adds a lot to our living room space actually. And I did put a little picture light above it. I'll link that in the description below because it's really affordable. And I think it does make a difference to shine some light down on the art piece. If you can hang one of these beside a window and get natural light shining on it, that's an even better spot for it. Overall, I just love black decor and was really happy with how this art piece turned out. For the next piece, I am using an IKEA frame and cutting some MDF to fit inside the frame to actually put my art on. I cut two big pieces of MDF in retrospect, if you have hardboard for this, it'll be a lot lighter, so it might be easier. But I cut one piece to fill the frame and another piece that was eight inches shorter in length and width to go right in the middle of the frame. I thought a fun way to add texture to this piece would be adding these dollar store dowels. So I'm putting those in first and then doing some measurements. I need one that's nine by 16. And then this one should be 16 as well, 16 by 7. And once I had those measurements, I cut hardboard to fit in those gaps where the dowels wouldn't be. Then I gave the hardboard a quick sand so that it would have a nice smooth finish and glued it in place. The next step was to glue those dowels in place and I opted to use one of my craft glues for this because it's really strong and sets and dries really quickly so it was just easier because I was constantly placing new dowels. So I did that until all of those dowels were in place. Then on the opposite corner, I wanted to space the dowels out a little more, so I made a little spacer and used the same craft glue to glue all the dowels in place. The final step before paint was to glue the inner MDF piece to the outer MDF piece and I had made little marks on the MDF board so I knew where to place it but then I did do some extra checks just to make sure the distance between the edges was the same on all sides. And finally, I painted everything with a nice warm white color. Since we were using that IKEA frame, I quickly took some time to spray paint it a new color. And then when we actually went to put the MDF piece into the frame, we turned the frame backwards and put the MDF piece down so that the frame stood up at the sides.
And here is how that piece turned out. I feel like it is such a contemporary piece. I love the look of it, the texture, the reversed frame coming up from the sides. Overall, I'm just really happy with how the piece came out. I definitely think it would grab people's attention and it was super affordable to make. All right, what are your thoughts? What do you think of our new artwork? Do you love it? I love it. I love all of them. I'm keeping them all up in our house for sure. Really happy with how they came out. Thank you so much for tuning in again. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, hit the bell so you don't miss out on future DIY and home renovation videos. Thanks for watching.